Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of Role Model Experts Cafe. I'm your host, Dr. L, the parent whisperer. And today with me, I have the amazing Miss Brenda Miller. Uh, she has been on some of our stages and a strong member of our community. And I'm very excited about what she has to say. And I love the background that she has as well. It just totally brings joy to my life. Welcome, Brenda, to our show. Thank you for being here. And thank you, audience members, for tuning in. Um, Brenda, can you tell us a little bit more about your topic and why it's important to you and how you, your personal story relates to it first? Yes, thank you, Dr. L. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So what I noticed as a young mom that I had lost my belly laugh, and that made me so curious about what, what is our nature and why did I lose it? And also, could I get mine back? That was the big question. So I started watching kids because they still had theirs. And so what I discovered, you know how kids are. Everybody who's watching this knows how kids are. So they're genuine and they're inclusive. They belly laugh. They can play with a stick and rocks and a cardboard box for hours. They're very creative. They forgive so easily. And as I watched that, I realized like if you sat down in a, a sandbox with them, they don't care what your skin color is. They don't, that doesn't register. They're not informed by the size of your car or your house, anything. They just want to play. And so they taught me so much about what their nature was. And then I realized it actually hit me really like a lightning bolt, Dr. L, when I realized, oh my goodness, that's our nature. It's just been obscured. And I began to understand that inside of us, there is that long forgotten whisper of well-being that's, that's waiting for us to uncover that. And how I, how I love to teach this to parents is, you know how you feel when you're compassionate and um, inclusive and genuine when you're belly laughing? That's, we feel those ways because that's our nature. It's natural to us. In any negative state, we don't feel that way. We feel we have a sense of upset, a sense of unease. That's because that's not in our nature. So I spend all of my day for the last 20 years teaching people to find that in themselves and prove to themselves that they can take themselves out of an upset in 30 seconds. Because I realize parents have two big problems. One is not enough time and the other is they, they need strategies that work on the spot. And so that's what I spent my career doing. But in addition to that, to help me learn more about that, I taught conscious conflict resolution in six countries. And uh, I learned something really interesting by doing that. And that was that conflict is the same everywhere worldwide. And that is, I want what I want. And when I don't get it, it obscures my humanity. So I spent all this time seeing if I could find strategies that would bring us back to this beautiful nature of ours. Uh, I call it instant evolution out of stress. And to that end, I guess, you know, after I taught conscious conflict resolution, I, I uh, wrote, well, I'm the author and the founder of the Kid Code, as you can see behind me. And I have that really nice picture, Dr. L, of the, of the little child smiling, just because it does make everyone smile. But the work is to make us understand that's our nature. We've just lost it. It is not gone. Yes, it's a bit different. And uh, so in that book, there's a hundred ways to get right now relief in an upset with a child. But even more importantly, it's, it's not just about how do you get relief because a child is upset, but you pass on to them more than your hair color and your eye color. You pass on to them these strategies that teach them how to self-regulate themselves in any upset because no one else can do that for us. And it's very possible. And when, what I was so surprised when I started doing these strategies, I never realized I, what I would uncover was this nature this joyfully harmless nature that exists in human beings, which is the one we're meant to operate from. And Brenda, I just get... Sorry, I love your approach to this. And in this day and age where we have something like the Will Smith incident or where we have the war in Ukraine, uh, it's truly amazing uh, because we have the quote unquote war on drugs, the war on poverty. And uh, what you're describing is something that a mentor of mine a while back told me that light and dark cannot occupy the same space at the same time. And the best way to fight darkness is to bring in the light. And your approach is truly that, that actually let's go back to joy. And through joy, we're going to eliminate 
uh, poverty and hunger and all of those other things. And the best part of it is you're describing that the joy is actually the natural state. So it actually requires less effort than all the other stuff that is basically a struggle and a fight and a survival type of a thing. So well done. And I really applaud you for the approach that you've taken. So thank you so much for that. Well, you're very welcome. And I know how important this is for everyone Absolutely. because we think stress is normal. Most of us, I don't. And I, I like to help parents prove to themselves that unless they're running out of the way of a bus, stress is not normal. We have normalized it, but we can self-regulate out of it. As I say, in 30 seconds, it's my favorite thing to do to show people how to do that. And, you know, I was reading the other day, I, um, 70% of Americans feel like they have a mental disorder, not just mental issues, but an actual mental disorder after the last, you know, the, the times we've been through. And so parents need to know they're doing a good job. They're doing a really good job because they've never had to go through really hard times like this before. And, um, but we have help for you, Dr. L's whole community. That's what it's for. So my work is just to, an adjunct to that. I appreciate it. Brenda, can you tell us a little bit more about, um, because this is, as you said, something that is really prevailing in society now and people really see that they, they, or they identify that they have a problem. So what are some of these challenges that they come to you with that they identify as the problem? You know, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question because I know that most of the parents I've worked with over the last 20 years, one of the things that bothers them most is that they punish their children. And uh, I teach them that the punishment, I love poking holes in the punishment paradigm, Dr. L, it's another one of my favorite things to do. Why? Because when I noticed when, if I was punishing my child, either like criticizing, judging unnecessarily, or if I spanked them, that I felt awful. I began to understand, wow, I need to stop punishing my kids because it's punishing me. And mm. that real simple realization made me see, well, well, that's way out of my nature. And what am I actually teaching them? And I found the most odd contradiction when, uh, when if I'm punishing someone to make them a better person, then I'm a good if I'm a punisher. The contradiction does not work. And so that's one thing that... Um, that people face I think when you get stressed it's it's really easy to slip into judging and criticizing and focusing on the on the person who has a problem instead of focusing on the problem so that's another challenge we teach people to no 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 focus on the the problem that's good um focus on the person uh if you focus pardon me if you focus on the person instead of the problem it'll be much easier to solve the problem but we're so focused on problems. If we focus on the people that we love, problem solving becomes much easier because love, if you feel like you love them, it's easy to solve the problem. Actually, that brings in another really, really good point because when you look at it as this is the situation, then the punisher and the punishee can actually work together as a team to solve the issue as opposed to the relationship that it develops as a punisher and a punishee. And don't we want to make it like, how can we make all of this, our lives work together for both of us? Right. That's yeah, we really do. Looking at it, reframing and change of mindset. That's, thank you. Very cool. Um, I think right there, I think you have addressed a big source of parents' frustrations and, uh, and, and dissatisfaction with uh, what surprises a lot of parents, uh, which is, uh, that you bring a child into this world and you're looking for that beautiful relationship and the blossoming of the individual and then you get stuck in the nitty-gritty and this is one of those areas that's really yucky basically so so thank you for shedding some light on that in a different perspective so appreciate it and you know they were only taught to punish it's not natural for us to punish and how we know that is because how we feel when we do right right so we can unlearn it and i love to show people and I challenge them with these really simple strategies I have. They're a mix, sometimes I call them, of uh, the Western wisdom 
um, sorry, Eastern wisdom and Western practicality. <laughs> I like that. I like mixing things together and bringing some <laughs> balance into things. So that's awesome. Very cool. So Brenda, what would be something that you would say, um, like something that uh, our parents or our audience members can uh, start doing right after this, not only for themselves, but for their families to actually bring more joy into their life, to kind of start looking at uh, their natural state as opposed to uh, focusing on the problem. So now we're talking about what I love because uh, every one of these strategies will deliver you back to your natural state. So the first one I'd love to share is called blessing mistakes. And so one day I was driving my dad's uh, two big truck in his two small corral and I put a dent in it. And when I showed it to him and apologized, he opened his arms wide to me and said, it doesn't matter a particle. And on that day, I learned how to give myself and others grace, not grief when a mistake is made. So the way you use this one is when you make a parenting mistake, when you holler at your child or um, anything, any parenting mistake, be impatient. You say to yourself, I matter more than this mistake. And then you, you say, and I feel the truth of that. You do matter more than a mistake. It's, it's very practical and honest. And then the next thing you do is make it right, because that's part two of blessing mistakes. We actually feel better, and you test this out for yourself, when we uh, take responsibility and just say sorry, make it right, versus denying or ignoring uh, uh, or justifying a mistake. So please use that right away. And so when your child drops the cereal on the floor, um, the instant clench you feel of, oh, no, I don't have time to clean this up, you know, you have to clean it up anyway. So be kind to yourself while you do that and be kind to the child by saying, you know, you matter more than this mistake. And I've seen this happen so many times. The child doesn't believe the grace that's been given to them. And, and then you just say to the child and, and let's clean this up. Or if they're old enough, you just teach them that if they make a mistake, they just can feel better when they clean it up or are responsible for it. Okay, so actually you brought up a really important point. I matter more than the incident. So that goes back to what you mentioned second, which is care and love for yourself. That, yeah. that if you can go ahead and be kind to yourself, so many people are not kind to themselves, right? So the practice of being kind to yourself enables you not only to open your heart, but also it makes it easier to be kind in different circumstances and situations as well. So being kind to yourself what, by recognizing that you matter more than the situa situation, that is an act of kindness right then and there. So when something like that happens, take a moment based on what you said, be kind to yourself and say, I matter more than the incident. Yeah. And the, uh, one way to remind yourself of this, you know, because our beliefs are heavily indoctrinated in us and also they're, they're habitual. We've been doing them for a long time. It's okay. We're all a work in progress. You have full permission to make, you know, to be a mess as a parent and then come to this organization with Dr. L and his contributors um, to leave parenting pain behind. But one of the ways you can remind yourself of this is on uh, using blessing mistakes. I invite all the kids in the house to make post-it notes or posters and stick them up all over that says, for love's sake, bless the mistake or um, don't cause a fight, make it right. Ooh, I like those, both of them. <laughs> so put those up around your house and then it'll remind you, just a minute, I don't, the mistakes happened, it's over. We all make lots of them. How do I want to feel and how do I want to treat another human being when they make a mistake? I have to tell you, Dr. L, when my dad did that to me, it changed my life. I realized I want to be that person who gives people grace, not grief. And one of the things that you just mentioned, it, this becomes really important and people sometimes don't realize that per, how pervasive this can be. The ability to make mistakes is the same as the ability to learn. And that's how we learn as children. That's how we figure out the world around us. So yes. whether it's our school systems, whether it's the home environment, if you push the kids to be perfect. If you push or discourage kids from making mistakes, you also are discouraging learning and teamwork and creativity. Uh, and those are some of the problems that we see in society when kids go through schools, the love of learning, creativity dies out of them because we do not encourage learning from mistakes. 
And what you just described with the post-it notes is very foundational to create that culture that it's okay to make mistakes, that it's okay to be kind to yourselves and uh, to make it right, that the ability to be creative to make it right. And, and you know, all of those things, they serve our well-being. Right. And that's really our goal. Exactly, exactly. I um, have another one. I have one yeah. more. Can I share it with you? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> I love it. It's called the tantrum tamer. So, Dr. L, I started studying myself when I was angry. I would take careful note of what I was thinking, what I was saying, and how I would act. And I realized, oh, my goodness, I act like such a dunce. So I made a dunce cap. I actually run and get this dunce cap and put it on my head. The very moment that I could feel anger start to arise. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the ridiculousness of the act itself dissolves the anger. Because, you know, anger has never delivered what it promised. Not even one time. And, and if you get an image of someone in your mind who's angry, like, you know, you can see their facial features and their aggression. Well, that's us when we're angry. And it's since it doesn't serve, since it's toxic, toxic to relationships and our bodies, um, <clears throat> it's a really good practice, <clears throat> pardon me, to try to dissolve it when it arises. And it does arise. So another really great strategy is, this is from a Canadian teacher, and he says, uh, John DeRuder, and he says, put a note in your pocket that says, I don't need my raging story anymore. I used that one for quite a while, just, and then some, when I forget to put the note in, I would just remember the moment, like somebody would cut me off on the freeway and I'd, you know, get all tense. And, and I, so what I would remember just a minute, do I really need this angry story anymore? So all of these ways are, are you, um, showing how powerful you are because your thoughts and your emotions when they're negative don't care about you not even a little bit right. but you care about you so you use these simple strategies to bring yourself back just give yourself a minute use a strategy and bring yourself back to the the peaceful positive parent that you want to be and that's really empowering actually and i want to make a little clarification here that what brenda is saying is do not deny yourself the feelings of anger or frustration. Yeah. Those are perfectly like, those are parts of your wholeness, right? To deny that means to deny part of you, but at the same time to be able to acknowledge it. And then as more importantly, you said to be able to dissolve it, puts you in control. And that's the ultimate thing for you to be in control. Many times when you deny it, what you're trying to do is subconsciously to say, I can't control this, so better or best not to deal with it, which is a very different approach than saying, hey, I acknowledge you, I see you, and I dissolve you, or I let go of you, uh, which basically puts you in the driver's seat on that. So very yeah, powerful. yeah, yeah, because anything that's uh, anything that's, as we all know, if it's if we repress it, it will express more loudly. So yeah. that's Dr. L is exactly that's exactly the way I see this also. And anger is not part of our true nature. It's part of our learned nature. And it's something we do have to go through as human beings. So when it comes, there it is. And now I have strategies. So I have about seven strategies that I regularly teach that help people dissolve the anger before it detonates. Brenda, you are awesome. And I know that you are a wealth of information and joy, actually. It's a Mm -hmm. Pleasure to actually work with you. So uh, please tell our audience members how they can connect with you, be part of your community uh, and work with you as well. Yes, anyone's welcome to have a look at the website. It has all the information on it. It's thekidcode.ca and we have free resources. There's even a free class for kids on there called Kids Take Back Your Life. And there's free resources for parents uh, where I do teach these two strategies, Blessing Mistakes and Tantrum Tamer. There's free resources for Bully Proof Yourself and Your Kids, and I call it the Little Book of Peaceful Power. And you can learn just things like Bully Basics and Bully Buttons and Bully Proof Strategies. And the reason is you, you do this to take the target off your back and put you back in charge. Wow. And uh, the other free resources are, um, uh, well, I think that's, that's all for free resources, but there's also on that website, we have about 10 Kid Code teachers right now in the world and we're hoping to have more and uh, you can take a course in the time it takes to really have a coffee break with one of these teachers 
if you want. And I have six books that uh, to schools I give for free. So if you're a school, please let me know. I also give my time free to schools for training all of the staff. And I have some experience. I've uh, I've spoken before with two teachers conferences. So I would love to see you there. And um, just remember this, when you're working with Dr. Ali, when you're trying to learn, you're an amazing human being. Thank you for having me. Awesome. All powerful, all important. So thank you for what you do. Um, guys, if you haven't already done so, please make sure that you check the description box. All the details of Brenda's work and connections are in the chat box. So make sure you check that out. One of the things that is important for us to know is that we need to show our kids how to connect. This connectivity is very, very important to feel supported. Many times when, as we've just talked about it, when you're feeling overpowered by these external factors, quote unquote, stress and all these other things, uh, bring in the reinforcements. There are plenty of people rooting your cause. So we want to make sure that you not only are supported and empowered, but also you show your kids that they can always reach out and find support as well. So going through this act uh, definitely will go a long way in establishing these habits, not only for yourself, but for them as well. So please go ahead and check the description box on this. Uh, Brenda, thank you so much for being here and sharing of your wisdom and your expertise and your time. Uh, and guys, make sure you click like and subscribe as well uh, so that you get notifications of the latest experts and expertise that they bring here along with their gifts in the description box. Uh, any final words of wisdom, Brenda, before we finish the session? Follow that long forgotten whisper of well-being that's inside of you. You know it's there. You feel it when you look at a mountain or you look at a creek. That's a reflection of your beauty and so you are beautiful. You are not bad. So find that. Love that. I love your acceptance. I love your joy and your kindness. Thank you for being here. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Until next time.